Saint Hill, track is on. Well, it may be hard to believe, but spring started five days ago and still no sign of the season. Good evening and welcome to News Center at 930. I'm Jared Hall. And I'm Stacy Russell. Will we be scraping the ice off our cars once again tomorrow morning? Rebecca Clark has the answers for us. It's tonight's top story. Yes, check your calendars. It still is March the 26th, but there's about three to four inches of snow on the ground outside. Muncie saw a lot of snow, sleet, and ice this morning. As we take a look at our first forecast, is a warm-up on the way? The winter blast is over. Temperature outside right now, 28 degrees. Winds out of the northwest at seven miles an hour. I will have a complete look and a detailed forecast in just a bit. All right, looking forward to it. Thanks a lot, Rebecca. Well, today's Indiana storm closed many schools and businesses and canceled numerous meetings. The dangerous roads are the main reason people are staying in. And as News Center reporter Dustin Grove tells us, luckily there were only a few minor accidents here in Muncie. So much for March going out like a lamb. It's nuts. It stinks. I think it sucks. This morning, a little ice. By noon, the snow nearly three inches deep. Plows out in full force, but trying to keep up. And driving in this stuff, not a good idea unless you have to be somewhere. This woman has to. I, I have about a half an hour drive home, and we have to pick up our daughter tonight from Indianapolis at the airport. Oh, yeah, slipping and sliding, that's right. My car's dead. <laughs> it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Three months too late. Wow. So that's the hazards of living in Indiana. <laughs> <laughs> Dustin Grove. News Center 43. Looks like he had a decent ice scraper there. And as Rebecca mentioned, she will be back with a full look at the forecast in just a little bit. Well, Ball State students will soon begin to see the effect of the state's huge budget problems. That's right. Cost of living in the residence halls is going up at Ball State. And Zach Winningham is at the news desk with more on this uh, little bit of a crisis. It is a crisis <laughs> indeed. Zach? Thanks, Jared and Stacy. Well, if you're a Ball State student living in the dorms next year, you might have to dig a little deeper into your pocketbook. The cost to live in the dorms might rise anywhere from $100 to $500 next year. President Blaine Brownell says that with the state of Indiana only increasing their payment to Ball State by 1 or 2 percent annually, the university must still find ways to keep Ball State functioning and also have room in the budget for improvement. Ball State students don't approve of the increases and wonder why they're necessary. This, but I just don't see the point in it, but I guess they want more money. So. And they can't even keep the sidewalks here cleaned off. What are they going to put the money towards? You know, I'd like to see something come out of it. You know, there's a lot of programs here, but most of the money that, that they're put, what are, the, what are they doing with the money that they're getting? I'd like to see what they're doing with the money they're getting, and then maybe we can talk about paying some more money. Um, being a student who pays for my own college that's, isn't really a good thing because that's going to be another couple of paychecks for me to be paying for my college tuition when I could be buying something else. So I'm not up for that, really. <laughs> The plan, according to Brownell, is to determine whether where Ball State is going, where it should go, and to aim the university in the directions it can go with the correct funding. Live at the news desk, I'm Zach Winningham, Jared and Stacy. All right, thanks a lot, Zach and Stacy. I've heard a lot of uh, students taking summer classes who say they weren't expecting such a sudden increase in the absolutely, tuition. absolutely. I know that I'm going to have to get a job to help my parents, so mm -hmm, we'll see. Yeah. All right, well, you know, Hoosiers say they are not happy with Governor O'Bannon's budget cuts, and the new ratings prove it. Opinion polls on the governor have dropped 10 percent since November. The polls show that the budget cuts are affecting over 60 percent of Indiana residents. The poll was designed by the Public Opinion Laboratory at IUPUI and was conducted last week. But those uh, numbers aren't keeping the governor from working. O'Bannon signed a bill today that would keep juveniles from facing the death penalty. Earlier this month, the General Assembly approved legislation to raise the state's minimum age for the death penalty from 16 to 18, and they also revised some sentencing procedures. O'Bannon says the bill is an appropriate change in Indiana's law on sentencing for convicted murders. Supporters of the measure say growing medical evidence shows that the brains of teens below 18 are underdeveloped and they cannot be held uh, to the same legal standards as adults. 
The investigation into the murder of Muncie resident Bradley A. Swab turns to possible suspects tonight. Police are questioning Timothy Dennison's claims that he accidentally shot and killed the 26-year-old Muncie man on March 18th. Swab was dead several hours before his body was discovered in a Muncie alleyway. Dennison also told investigators he does not remember the incidents leading to and following the shooting. He's charged with murder and obstruction of justice, a Class D felony. Dennison is scheduled to appear at an initial hearing next Monday in Delaware County Court 1. The fight for a ban on public smoking burns on with concerned Muncie citizens. The latest battle took place yesterday at the Delaware County Commissioner's meeting. Julie Govea presented a petition that was signed by 691 citizens who want to completely ban smoking in restaurants. Muncie Smoking Task Force is finalizing their plans and will soon recommend the latest smoking regulation for restaurants. The task force says the regulation would greatly restrict smoking in restaurants, but would not abolish it. Well, diabetes is on the rise in Indiana. According to health officials, one out of 17 adults in the state has the disease. Health Commissioner Greg Wilson says complications resulting from diabetes are extremely high because 75% of Hoosiers with the disease aren't being monitored with expert recommendations. New guidelines for diabetes care have been sent to 12,000 Indiana doctors by the health department. At least 360,000 Hoosiers are affected by diabetes, costing the state $3.6 billion in 1999. Well, conflict in the Middle East may prohibit Palestine's leader from leaving the country. Next on News Center, how Yasser Arafat is working around the warfare. And what does Mother Nature have in store for the rest of the week? You won't want to miss the forecast coming up. That's right. Plus, next to Halle Berry's acceptance speech, it was one of the most interesting parts of Sunday night's Oscars. Local reaction to Cirque du Soleil when News Center at 9.30 returns. Former O.J. Simpson attorney Johnny Cochran is at it again, but this time on a much different type of case. The high-profile attorney has filed a $50 million lawsuit on behalf of a man who died from inhalation anthrax. Thomas Morris Jr. was one of the Brentwood postal workers who came in contact with the bacteria. Cochran claims the Kaiser Permanente facility in Marlowe Heights misdiagnosed Morris, telling him he had a virus and then sent him home. Morris died three days later. Cochran calls the death uh, needless and unnecessary that there was some malice involved in this case. And we won't get more specific than that because this case is now in litigation. But the, com com the complaint uh, spells it out for us and we're, we're, what we're looking for in terms of to make sure this never happens again. And the Kaiser declined to comment on the suit. Well, should he stay or should he go? Not everyone believes Chairman Yasser Arafat should attend the Arab League summit in Beirut. Egyptian President Hosni Mubarak, who has announced he will not attend the sessions, is advising Chairman Arafat to address the meeting by satellite uplink instead. Mr. Mubarak says it's difficult to predict what the Israeli government will do about travel by the Palestinian leader, and the Egyptian foreign minister says Israel should not dictate what the chairman may or may not do. CNN's Rula Amin has more from Beirut. As the appeals to let Yasser Arafat out of Ramallah increase, in Beirut, more and more people say Arafat should actually stay put in Ramallah. It's better for him to stay with his people, not to be liberated by Sharon or Cheney. Even the Egyptian president, Hosni Mubarak, says he advises Yasser Arafat not to come to Beirut. The Israelis have been playing games with this matter of whether Arafat would attend here. They were trying to pose conditions, unacceptable conditions, and the honorable way is for Arafat to say that he is not coming because it does not depend on the decisions of the Israelis, which is illegal, which is unjustified. And Arafat, whether he comes or not, will be represented by all the rest of the Arab states. Israeli officials say Yasser Arafat can leave only after he agrees to a ceasefire and has met the conditions Israel has set. <laughs> In the light of all the pressures applied on the Palestinians and Yasser Arafat, we wish that he wouldn't come to the summit. Because if he does, it would look like Arafat had achieved a victory by coming here, and the next step would be to ask the Palestinian fighters to silence their guns. In the Arab world, where there is overwhelming support for the Palestinian Intifada to continue, a concern. Arab leaders may sell out by pressuring Yasser Arafat to end the Intifada or compromise on the right of Palestinian refugees. Concern also amongst these Palestinian refugees at Shatila refugee camp in Beirut. If he came 
unconditionally, yes, it is a victory. But if, they, if he has to pay a political price for that, it's not a victory, it's a defeat. In my opinion, it is better for him to remain in Palestine. Others are hoping Arafat will be able to return to Beirut without conditions. 20 years after he was driven from the city by Israeli forces, then led by Defense Minister Ariel Sharon. That would be the biggest victory. After being forced out, he would be coming back as a president. He's more than welcome. We will receive him with honor and venerate him. Even in the West Bank and the Gaza Strip, more than 45% of Palestinians say they don't want Yasser Arafat to come to Beirut, according to one local poll. Concerned what political price Yasser Arafat would have to pay in order to get here. Also worried, Ariel Sharon may not allow Yasser Arafat to return to Ramallah. Rula Amin, CNN, Beirut. A special wreath-laying ceremony at the Vietnam Veterans Memorial marks a major milestone today. The ceremony marked the 20th anniversary of the memorial's groundbreaking. The, memor the memorial is one of the most widely visited in Washington, D.C. The names of those killed during the Vietnam War or who remain missing in action are inscribed on the black granite wall. Trampolines, trapeze bars, and human-sized <laughs> gerbil wheel filled the stage Sunday night at the Academy Awards. Yeah, Who would have known? <laughs> the performance given by Cirque du Soleil at the Oscars was not your typical halftime show on Hollywood's biggest night. News Center's Rob Coles is at the news desk with more. Well, performing at the Oscars is a right given only to the elitist performers in show business. This year, a group that started as a gang of street performers in Quebec in the mid-1980s took center stage and dazzled the crowd. Cirque du Soleil gave an Oscar-worthy performance featuring acrobatics, daredevil stunts, and heart-pounding music that left some Muncie residents talking about more than gold statues. Who won what, who wore what, and where the stars are partying are the usual topics of conversation after the Academy Awards. Although Halle Berry stole the hearts of millions and Poitiers brought the house to tears, some Muncie residents were impressed by a group of lesser-known entertainers. Good. Put it next to the other one. Yeah, do, do some curls. So, right. I thought Cirque du Soleil was awesome when they were, like, because they were using all the special effects from movies that people would know. Um, for like the basis for their show and how they made the big ring of fire for Lord of the Rings and the guy walked on the boulder for Raiders of the Lost Ark. I thought it was phenomenal. I really like was so happy that they were there. Yeah, it like ended up they being about like... Re they were replaying like the stunts mm -hmm. from the movies. Like yeah. they were showing clips from the movies like the stunts and then they were doing them. The coolest part was when they were over the audience. And yeah. that was cool. <laughs> Although the members of Cirque du Soleil did not walk down the red carpet with these stars, the impression they left on the audience was indelible. Cirque du Soleil is currently on a North American tour with dates yet to be determined, and they also have daily shows at Disney World and in Las Vegas at the Bellagio Hotel. Jared and Stacy. Thanks a lot. You know, I was a little worried. I heard Rob might be performing some of those stunts, but it turned <laughs> well, out not to be that way. Speaking of performing stunts, walking around in that weather today <laughs> made me feel like I was performing some tricks. Yeah, what, what's up? Acrobatics there going on. Well, we had a lot more snow today, but will there be any more for tomorrow? I'll have a complete look at the forecast when News Center at 930 continues. <laughs> And now the moment you've all been waiting for, the forecast for 9.30. The high today in Muncie, 29 degrees, well below the normal at 52. The low topped this morning at 24 degrees. The sun will rise tomorrow morning at 6.34. You should be able to see it through some of the clouds and set tomorrow evening at 7.01 p.m. Here's a look at the highs across the state. The warmest part of the state, checking in Evansville, 40 degrees. Muncie saw 29. Indianapolis, 31. Terre Haute and Lafayette and South Bend, all with 33 degrees and a lot of snow. Currently outside, overcast skies, 28 degrees is the temperature. Winds coming out of the northwest at 7 and a pretty high humidity at 89%. Now here's what our weather looked like today. We were under a huge system of low pressure, dumping lots of snow up to two to four inches in the Muncie area, and even further north into Fort Wayne, Bluffton, up to nine inches of snow, and they are under a snow emergency, and many people snowed in. Here's a look at the satellite for this evening. Cloud cover over much of the United States, some high pressure moving in behind these clouds, which will be warming us up just a tad. Here's 
regionally over much of Muncie and Indiana completely covered by clouds for this evening. Here's a look at the radar. The system we saw today, all the precipitation pushed off to the east coast, so now they're seeing the effects of what we saw today. And here's a regional map, uh, um, Indiana looking very clear for this evening. Tomorrow's national picture, high pressure takes over in the area, no more precipitation until most likely late Wednesday evening. Here's tomorrow's lows, actually for tonight, we'll be sitting in the low 30s, upper 20s for tonight, and for tomorrow's highs, we'll be in the 40s. So a nice change from the snow that we saw earlier today and yesterday. And for Thursday, high pressure dominating the entire area, warming us up, melting the snow, and we should see a clear Easter weekend. Before tonight, temperature down to 20 degrees, winds out of the northwest at 9 miles an hour, and the clouds will continue to stay in the area. When you wake up tomorrow morning, partly cloudy skies, temperature 33 degrees, winds coming out of the northwest at 7 miles an hour. And for tomorrow, the entire forecast, overcast conditions high up to 43, so the snow will start to melt away, and then by Thursday, some rain might move into the picture, actually late into Wednesday night and into Thursday, high of 50s for the rest of the week. So, it is Indiana. Yeah, well, <laughs> it, at least it's getting better, and yeah. there's hope in sight. I <laughs> thought the Easter Bunny was going to have to wear a snowsuit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, thanks, thanks a lot, Rebecca. Rebecca. No problem. Well, Michelle Deneen is uh, here to give us a look at sports. It's too bad the Ball State doesn't have a bobsledding team. <laughs> it sure is. They'd be getting damage. a plenty of action this week, that's for sure. <laughs> um, the snow's been keeping the baseball and softball teams off the field all week, basically. But um, we do have some all-MAC performers to tell you about, and we'll be back after the break with that and more. The weather may be preventing the BSU men's baseball team from playing, but this week's show, this week's snow can't change last week's strong performances. Juniors Luke Haggerty and Adam Metzler were voted the MAC Pitcher and MAC Player of the Week by conference coaches. Haggerty struck out a career high 16 batters and didn't give up a single walk in the Cards' five win, five to one win over Valparaiso on Saturday. Metzler earned his recognition by going six for nine in the Valpo series and racking up three home runs and six RBIs. The Cardinals are scheduled to return to action tomorrow with a 3 p.m. game at Cincinnati before heading to Northern Illinois on Friday to open the team's 2002 mid-american conference schedule well the baseball team wasn't the only bsu squad racking up honors last week two gymnasts seniors jenny gant and renee plank both earned all mac first team honors for their strong performances in the mac championship meet over the weekend gant won the floor competition with nine with a 9.9 .9 score marking the fifth title in that event this season plank was victorious on the bars also scoring a 9.9 .9 and came away with the fifth place finish on beam Gant and Plank are the first BSU gymnasts since 2000 to earn first team All-MAC accolades and just the 18th and 19th in school history to garner the honor. As everyone knows by now, IU has made it to the Final Four for the first time since 1992. The team will take on Oklahoma Saturday night in Assembly Hall. Will the Hoosiers have, will the Hoosiers have to do it without starter Tom Coverdale though? IU head coach Mike Davis says no. Coverdale, who sprained an already agitated ankle in Saturday night's win over Kent State, will play. With the injury, though, Coverdale's PT will be limited. That means that inexperienced freshman Donald Perry will be seeing more of the court. In the Kent State game, Perry shot just 40% from the line. Perry says he needs to settle down under pressure for his team to be successful. Tip-off for the game is set at 6.07 p.m. It does... It doesn't look like it outside, but we're nearing the end of March and the madness continues. Tonight, the semifinals of the National Invitational Tournament are taking place as we speak. Earlier this evening, Temple took on Memphis. The Owls trailed by five at halftime, battled back, but fell short in the final seconds. Final score, Memphis takes it 78-77. In progress now is the Syracuse-South Carolina matchup. The winner will take on Memphis in the finals of the NIT scheduled for Thursday night. That game can be seen on ESPN. That'll do it for sports tonight. Back to you guys. All right. Thanks, Thanks a lot. lot.
Well, coming up after the break, will it ever get warm? News News, Rebecca Clark will let you know. Plus, the odds are 1 in 11 million. No, it's not winning the lottery, but it's giving birth to identical quintuplets. Some lucky parents in Sacramento will have their hands full. That story and more coming up after the break. As for tonight, the clouds will continue to stay in the area. 20 degrees for the temperature when you wake up tomorrow. Actually, all day tomorrow, overcast conditions, a high up to 43 degrees. So the snow will start to melt away, and by late Wednesday evening into Thursday, some rain moves in, melting even more in highs in the 50s for the rest of the week. Okay, looking a little bit better. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Rebecca. Thanks, Rebecca. Ever heard of a 1 in 11 million chance? Well, identical quadruplets fall into that category, and that rare happening has occurred. Monday night, four identical girls were welcomed into the world by a California couple. The largest quad weighs 2 pounds, 8 ounces, and the smallest is only 2 pounds and 5 ounces. The babies were born more than a month early, but doctors are optimistic about their health. Could you imagine? Oh, man, I, I think I just want to have maybe two. That's good enough. But not <laughs> in a row, and I don't know, just <laughs> nice and not easy. Not at the same time? No, just, you know. no. No, that's All good. All right. Well, <laughs> that does it for us tonight at 9.30. Thanks for joining us. I'm Jared Hall. And I'm Stacey Russell. News Center 43 is an official CNN Student Bureau. Be sure to tune in tomorrow.